بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبعد all thanks and praise are due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of the whole universe i bear witness that there is nobody worthy of worship in truth except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is but a messenger of allah we seek the peace and blessings of allah on the noble soul of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is also his companions and all muslims the day of recording after this we greet us in the greeting of al islam the salutation that is unique and matches all occasion and all time and all events i say may the peace and blessings of allah be with you inshallah today we are going to be looking at <clears throat> leadership in islam but we are not going to look at it comprehensively because of time factor but we shall look at what i called khasa'is al-qiyada fil islam we say al-qiyada that is leadership fil islam in islam so we want to look at min khasa'is al-qiyada min khasa'is al-qiyada fil islam from the uh, characteristics of leadership in islam there is no doubt that mankind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us as leaders in this world in surah al-baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surah 2 from ayah 30 downwards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask told the angels wa id qala rabbuka lil malaika inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa Allah to the angels I want to put on land khalifa qalu they said atajalu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiqud dima do you want to put in this world man yufsiku man yufsidu fiha those who are going to cause mischief wa yasfiqud dima and they are going to be shedding their blood wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika we are the one that celebrate your praises one who called disulak and we extol your holiness call allah said inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun i know what you know not from this ayah it means our coming to this world is not by chance we don't find ourselves here by chance we can say we are lucky to be here but it as a result of deliberate plan intention of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place us here so khalifa there are so many uh, meaning given to khalifa by the scholars of the quran uh, by the essayists among the scholars that means those the commentators on the ayah of the quran and these meaning they are not contradictory some of them are complementary and some of them are as a result of the fact that there are some ayah in the quran that are susceptible to different interpretations but the interpretations we are going to use must be in accordance with the basis of the book and the explanation of the press messenger of allah which is the sunnah it must not go in it must not contradict any of the basic <coughs> ayah of the quran and the sunnah of the messenger of allah So <clears throat> Faiz Jerent I'm sorry Faiz Jerent um mentioned here as khalifa one of the meaning is somebody 
that will not be permanent in a place is going to leave another person will succeed. It's going to leave another person will succeed. That is khilafa. You know, <clears throat> in the dua for travel, where you are traveling, he said, Allahumma at the end, anta sahibu fi dunya wal khalifa fi limal wal hal. So khalifa, then someone will say this is a caliph. That is somebody who came into position as a result of somebody else has gone. One of the many again is Atakali, that is their leadership. That means you want to go and become leader there. So, as a result of that, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us as leader, human beings, over whatever <coughs> is in the world. And we are the first group of people that we are going to lead ourselves before we can lead others. It is after we have been able to lead ourselves successfully that we can lead others. Any group of people that are unable to lead themselves, they will not be able to lead any other. So it's just like having a management team. If the team is not being led by the managing director or chief executive officer, CEO, you can be sure that they will not be able to lead others outside the organization. Allah tell our alim. So, leadership in Islam is a trust. Leadership in Islam is a trust. It has been placed on you, but it is a trust. In Surah 33 of the Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab, towards the tail end, maybe the, about three ayah to the last, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna aradna li amanata ala samawati wal abd wal jibal fa'abayna an yahmilnaha wa shfaqna minha wa hamalaha li insanu inna ukana dhuluman jahula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna aradna li amanata al amana, trust. We give it to ala samawati, the seven heavens wal abd and the land while jibal and the hills the mountains they all beg Allah that they cannot accept the trust watch they are afraid to take it because they know the implication Allah now said <coughs> but man accepted it the trust inna hukana dhuluman jahula but man is zalim and unjust. Jahula is ignorant. Some of the scholars have explained that man is unjust when he knowingly disobey Allah. And Jahula, man is uh, ignorant when he does not knowingly disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this trust is leadership. Is leadership. Some also have translated to me Allah Aklu, that is intelligence. That is why in Surah Al Asab that I'm quoting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Li you add the Ballahu li munaf mushir munafikina wal munafikat, wal mushrikina wal mushrikat, wa yatuba law al mu minina wal mu minat, wa kana law ugafura rahima. That is the last ayah in Surah Al Ahzab. In order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish the hypocrites, male and female, the politists, male and female, and to forgive the believers, male and female. Okay? Wakanallah ugafura rahima. Allah is of forgiven. He is merciful. Now, the implication is that when you accept a trust, then it behoves you that you should be knowledgeable about that trust you want to accept. Which means in Islam, leadership is a trust. You are holding the leadership in a trust for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the land. So one of the prerequisites for somebody who is going to be a leader or for a leader is to be knowledgeable. And we can derive that even from the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah that I was reading the other time. When Allah told the angels that he's putting a vicegerent on earth, and the angels said that, are you going to put those who are going to commit mischief 
and bloodshed on the land. Allah said, he knows what they do not know. The word follows the ayah. Allah said, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ لِأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرْضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِ بِأَسْمَاءِ آؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِكِينَ Allah now said, Allama Adam al Asma Akula. Allah now teaches Adam the names. Names. Kulla. Every name. Wa aradahum alali malaika. Then he now plays what he has taught Adam before the angels. Ambiuni bi asma i aula. Give me the names of these things that I've put before you. In quantum sodicin, if your claim that you made the other time that these people are not fit to be here on this land is authentic, is correct. Kalu, the angels replied, Subhanaka, holy unto you, you are pure beyond what has been ascribed to you as partners by the politists. La ilmelana, no knowledge of we. Illa ma alam tana, except what you have teaches teach, teach, what you teaches us, or alam tana, or except what you have taught us. In naka anta le ali mola hakim. Surely you are the knowledgeable, that is all knowing, ala hakim the wise. Then Allah now told Adam, ambi umbi asma iim. Okay, tell them the name of this. Falama amba um. When Adam now told them the name is called, Let, let's uh, leave that one. The point I'm trying to make there, <coughs> invariably, is that knowledge is essential for anybody that wants to be a leader. So Adam is coming to this world to be a leader. Allah gave him knowledge. Therefore, a, need, a leader should not be an ignorant person. You should have knowledge of what leadership in itself entails. What leadership itself entails. What of it? One of it is a trust. It's an amana. Leadership is not your property. You are holding it as a trust for Allah. And whenever we say something is an amana, it's a trust. Then you are going to be called to account to give the stewardship of the time you spend as a leader. So if a leader is knowledgeable. He, of the fact, is oblivion of the fact, or he knows that leadership is a trust, then in leadership, you will discover that he will want to be very careful so that he will be able to give a, a render easy account, not a difficult one, or what you put him in trouble. Another distinctive characteristic of um, leadership uh, in Islam, apart from knowledge, what I, when I say knowledge, knowledge of what leadership enters, knowledge of the people you want to lead, knowledge of the environment where you are leading, and knowledge of the environment outside where you are leading. Many people today aspire to be leaders because they want to make name. They want to be famous. They want people to know them. Oh, I'm the president of so-so country. Oh, I'm the governor of so-so state. Oh, I'm chairman of local government. So, so, so. But they do not have the knowledge of what the position they are aspiring to hold, what it entails. And one, that is one of the major problems we are having. Even in our country here, we are people who are in leadership, but they are not prepared for it. They don't know what it entails from the qualities of leadership in islam <clears throat> is that what we call al adu or what i say that leadership in islam is guided by two principles leadership in islam is guided by two principles the first principle is al adlu and the second principle is al ihsan <clears throat> the first principle is al-adlu. The second principle is al-ihsan. <clears throat> what is al-adlu? Al-adlu is justice. And what is al-ihsan is goodness. What do we mean by justice in Islam? Al-adlu. 
kulli the hakim haqqa that is what we call uh, justice in islam adlu when you give to individuals is due haq is his own due okay that means his own right you give the right that is due for individual justice in islam does not mean equality we may say it is equity but not equality for sometimes or many at times you don't have the same right i give a very simple example in the house a male child and a female child a female child that has reached puberty we need part to pack herself because of menstruation so the right of that child to more fund is established she will need a bra we are as a male child does not need that so if anybody is talking about equality there so if we give a male child for example in nigeria maybe we give him 500 naira to maintain himself a female child we need more than that because of what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way allah has created her she is in need of more so that example survives or let me give another example i will still use children <clears throat> as a sample a, a a child maybe somebody has three children somebody has three children this child is using size 42 this one is using size 44 the third one is using size 39 so when you want to do justice in islam justice is you will buy same type of shoe or sandals both with their sizes you do not say you add this size is 39 plus 42 plus 44 and divide it by 3 and you say you want to be just you now do the mathematics and by that 39 plus 42 plus 44 divided by 3 the answer is what you are going to buy for them no it all the kulli the hakin haqqa give each person is due is right i think so from there the same thing now you implement in leadership because in the house you are so a leader like the hadith of the messenger of allah kullukum ra wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati every one of you you are a leader although ra'i mean a shepherd okay wa kullukum fa wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati you are going to be asked to render the stewardship give account of your leadership in your house then the messenger of allah went forward talk about the father talk about the mother so in the house so but the, my point is in the state too maybe the leader of a country or a governor the leader of a state or local government there are rights there are dues for example a town of a population of 50000 people you can't say because all of them are towns so what you give to a town of 50000 people is what you are going to give to another town of 2 million people people do it nowadays they will say both of them are towns it doesn't matter it matters in islam because you are not giving the people who are there they are due so may almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us right so allah adlu means justice the principle of justice and that is why we have a lot of problem in this country today because there is no justice in dealing with the followers this is not problem that led to ethnicity or what i can call tribalism in islam tribalism and ethnicity itself is condemned because allah said in surah al-hujurat in surah al-hujurat in the quran in khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arufu 
inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. Surely we have created you and divided you into nations and tribes. Wajalnaakum shu'uban wa qaiba ila li ta'arufu for identity sake not to despise one another. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. Surely the pious one in the sight of Allah inna akramakum the best of you or the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is at kum the one that is most pious therefore as a leader your tribe or your ethnic group is not going to be form the criteria by which you are going to govern people but rather you treat all of them as one Unfortunately, in our country today, if a leader is trying to be just, sometimes people might say that is uh, uh, denying an ethnic group their right. For example, maybe an ethnic group, their population is just 2 million. Another ethnic group, their population is 5 million. So in the distribution of maybe worth those with five million from sharia point of view they are going to have more than those with two million but some people do not understand this principle in sharia which we call adlu which is justice we translate justice to mean equality so they'll be asking that what has been given to this tribe of four million people exactly must be given to a tribe of two million people. It is not correct in the Sharia of Islam because you are not practicing justice. You are not giving each person his due. So you are not looking at them from perception of ethnicity, nor from perception of tribe, but you are looking at them from the perception of human beings that you are governing. Some people too, it happens in their family. When they get to the position of authority, you will discover that the family members will continue to bombard him with requests that we go against the principle of justice. And if he adheres strictly to the principle of justice, people will call him a bad son. Such that after his tenure in the office or after he died, people will continue to record his name or mention his name in the book of bad people as a result of trying to practice justice. So that is why another distinctive quality or characteristics of a leader is that they must be resolute. That is why Allah told Messenger of Allah, either Azamta, when you have determined, you have decided, he first told him that you consult your people. That is one of the characteristics of leadership in Islam. You make consultation. You don't become a dictator. Dictatorship is not part of Islam. And democracy is not even part of it. You make consultation. Consultation in Islam does not mean majority carries the vote. Because sometimes the majority might be wrong. And it will be clear that they are wrong. But they will tell you, since we are more than the others, then you have to follow what we say. In Islam, it is not. In Islam, what is the correct thing? So, what I am saying, in essence is that this principle of justice, so people will think it is equal, it is not correct. The second thing is what we call goodness. Where do we get this principle of justice and goodness? It's in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ayya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah commands justice and goodness. Where does the implementation of goodness and justice come? I give an example. There is a university where medicine is being run as a course. Because of the competition for medicine, the cutoff is now 300. But one of the students scored 250. By any standard, he has passed the exam because it's 250 over 400. He has passed. And it does not mean that if he's given admission to study medicine, he will not cope. But it's as a result 
of the high number of people that want to study medicine that makes the cost of to grow up, to, to, to move up. But the vice chancellor is now told, this boy that made 250 is from a village. In the history of that village, nobody has ever been a medical doctor there. And in that village, there is no medical doctor. That is why this boy has made effort to study science so that he can become a medical doctor and be useful to his people. Now, that is not justice. Now, it is goodness. The principle of Isan will make that vice, vice, vice chancellor to use what we call privilege, waivers and special consideration to give admission to that boy who, is, who, who made 250 out of uh, 400. Some people will now be criticizing. That is the fraudism. Hey, somebody made 290, wasn't given admission. But this one made 250, was given admission. He was given admission on the basis of goodness, not on the basis of justice. These are the two things. It could happen in a country. A, 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 there can be a road that leads to a village. And there is a gorge there. If the government wants to construct that road, maybe it is about 10 billion. But there is another place, there is no gorge. The road there, where you want to construct the road, you spend maybe one billion. But every, there is accident there every time. The principle of goodness says you have to do that one, even if the cost is small and the number of people living in that village are not many. But they are dying. So you have to do that. These are the principles. And many people don't understand it. I could remember sometimes some bad roads that belongs to the federal government. You see some state government, they put, this road belongs to the federal government. You understand? Trying to tell people that it is not their responsibility to do it. You are correct under the principle of justice because it's not your road. But the principle of goodness says, who are those plying the road? your people that you are leading. As a result of that, it behoves you as the governor to construct the road so that your people can enjoy it. We can go on and on and on. And that is why a leader must be resolute, like I said the other time, which is one of the qualities of a leader. But summarily, what I am saying that there are two basic principles, two basic principles that guide leadership in Islam. These two basic principles are al adlu justice, and number two, al ihsan goodness. A leader, like I've said, must have knowledge to be able to understand what justice is and what goodness is. And from there, he'll be able to do what he's supposed to do so that he's going to earn the reward of Allah, not the wrath of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I believe... If our leaders can adhere strictly to this, there will be less problem. And explain it to the populace too, because the populace have been misinformed as a result of people with their own selfish interests. So populace have been misinformed. The government must also do orientation for people to understand what justice is, what goodness is, so that people, there will not be hula balo when government is taking some actions or putting some things in place that appears not to be unjust uh, system. And Allah knows best. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless whatever the little we have said and forgive us where we have heard and reward us where we have not heard. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi li akhirati حسنا تو وكنا اداب النار وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته رمضان مبارك